Snass Junk! Hello, welcome to part 5 of the ROM Hacks video series where I take a look at some of the best Super Nintendo ROM hacks out there, with one major exception I'll get to in a little bit. In the description below, you'll find the tools you'll need to get these to work properly. It's pretty simple, all you're really doing is taking the normal game ROM and using a utility program to join it with a patch, and that modifies the game accordingly. Most of these are pretty easy to get to work, especially since all the links I have listed here come with a readme file that guide you step by step to make sure you can get the game to work. In past videos, I've talked about everything from New Super Mario World 2 around the world, which to this day is still one of my personal favorites, along with Hyper Metroid, Super Metroid Arcade, Link to the Past Randomizer, on and on. So let's take a look at some more. Here's another favorite I've found, built as a Super Mario World hack titled Super Boss Collection, and uh, all you really need to know is in the title. You boot up the game, and you're met with a huge menu of all sorts of bosses spanning across all sorts of different games. Everything from Zelda to Mega Man to Kirby, even some Donkey Kong Country and Secret of Mana bosses are here. And, of course, there's tons of Mario bosses spanning a bunch of different generations. There's 77 bosses in total, and you play as Mario, you beat whatever boss you choose, and then you're back to the main menu. It's pretty simple, but it's still really fun. This hack was a huge team effort that involved dozens of people, so kudos to them. It's a great time playing as Mario with typical Mario World physics against all sorts of different bosses spanning all sorts of different games. In the last ROM Hacks video, I talked about Super Mario Logic, and here's another one that's kinda similar, in that it's another single-screen puzzle game, Mario's Keytastrophe Rebirth Edition, made by SNN. There's 37 puzzles, with the goal being to get the key whichever way you can into the keyhole. If you get stuck and need to restart, just press L and R together and the stage will reset. This one gets complicated pretty quickly. There's nothing too ridiculous here, but it's still a challenge. There's also a timer on the world map so you can keep track of your best time, and there's even multiple paths if you want to try and find the quickest way to end the game. This hack is well done, and I hope to see more single-screen puzzle platformer stuff like this in the future. Here's one that's gotten really popular with over 20,000 downloads. It's Jump One Half, and it's a sequel to the original Jump ROM hack from years ago, made by Lazy, Six Corby, and LOL Yoshi. This one is a near-perfect blend between creative level design and brutal difficulty, and I know the latter is something that's gonna scare some of you off, but it shouldn't. This hack doesn't have that stupid, cheap, Kaizo-style difficulty. There's not a lot of insane jumps or tricks that require you to be pixel-perfect. It's a lot more than that, like this level here that starts starts out normal enough, until you accidentally touch what appears to be a death mushroom, I guess, but it doesn't kill you. Instead, it triggers a huge earthquake that speeds the background and timer way up. This is one of the most pleasantly chaotic Mario World hacks out there. The designers crammed a lot of neat ideas into this one, and it's a lot of fun to play. And there's also a ton of content here, with 130 exits, so it's easy to sink dozens of hours into this one. This next one is not a ROM hack. I repeat, it's not a ROM hack, but I wanted an excuse to talk about this project, so I'm putting it here to continue the Mario theme. This is a homebrew made by M. Nagler, and it's the original Super Mario Land for Game Boy, remade in the style of the new Super Mario Bros. games as they appeared on DS, but it was created from the ground up as a Super Nintendo game. There's lots of really impressive stuff here, and the game looks and plays great. Safe to say this would have set the friggin' world on fire had there been a Mario game like like this in the mid-90s. And yeah, bear in mind, this is a recreation of Super Mario Land through and through. There's even the goofy gray fireball that only bounces once and flies off the screen. But it's clear a ton of work went into this one, so check it out any way you can. Donkey Kong Country is finally seeing some decent ROM hacks these days, thanks to Simeon 32s DKC Resource Editor. This one is called The Kremlin's Revenge, made by Preposterify, and I recommend this one for anyone who's put a million hours into Donkey Kong Country. The first half of this one is a really solid challenge if you're already super familiar with how Donkey Kong and how Diddy control. You'll really enjoy it. But the second half of this one gets pretty ridiculous with how precise you have to be to make certain jumps. Even seasoned veterans are gonna have trouble with the later levels in this one, but if you're down to clown, this hack is up for it. 
Mega Man is also starting to get more and more love in the hacking community. This one is Rockman 7 EP made by Purasabe. And bear in mind, this is a hack of Rockman 7 for Super Famicom, not Mega Man 7. This one is made by the same person that made Rockman 4 minus Infinity, and it's every bit as good, if not better. Everything here is upgraded. The weapons, the bosses, the level design, the music. I especially like the vehicle sections, or this boss fight here where he destroys the ground beneath you. That's really cool. This hack makes excellent use of all the pre-existing mechanics in the game, while inventing a few new ones that really add a lot. If you dig Mega Man, you gotta check this one out. One of my favorite things about doing these ROM hack videos is finding something for a game you wouldn't expect to see. I see it all the time when it comes to improvement patches, like for example, Arcana has the Seal of Rimsala patch and Super Double Dragon has the Return of Double Dragon patch. Now we're starting to see full-on ROM hacks of certain games, one of them being Gemfire of all things. This one is called Dawn of Ishmeria, made by Dragon Atma. Now for those unfamiliar, Gemfire is one of those old clunky turn-based strategy games made by Koei. Some of those games are hopelessly dated, but Gemfire has at least held up pretty well over the years, and this ROM hack includes new characters and officers, new scenarios, and even a new story that takes place before the original game. The author even went as far as to make certain characters appear younger in their portraits. Now that is dedication. This hack also rebalances things a bit as well, so if you dig games like Gemfire, or if you were ever clamoring for a sequel, or I guess in this case a prequel, then you'll really enjoy this one. But then we've got the opposite end of the spectrum. Here's a hack of Arkanoid Do It Again called Arkanoid Reblocked made by Svambo. Not every hack needs to be this huge detailed undertaking with new stories and characters and weapons and all that. Sometimes all you need to scratch an itch is to just have more of a certain game, and that's all this hack is, just more Arkanoid. I personally appreciate this one because I grew up playing a ton of Super Breakout for Atari 2600. So yeah, if you've finished Do It Again and you just want more breakout puzzles, then check out this hack. Finally, here's Goof Troop ST Space Treasure. Goof Troop has long been one of the most underappreciated games of its era, both because it's a puzzle game with accessible puzzles that aren't too tough but aren't too easy either, but it's also because it's two-player co-op. It's a real shame this game never got a sequel, but Goof Troop ST is as close as we can get to one. There's entirely new puzzles here, including some new graphics that make use of some unused stuff buried in the original game, and it's very much in step with how Goof Troop plays. Not too easy, not not too hard, and it comes across as just what many of us have wanted for years, just more Goof Troop. Alright, that's all for now, and I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day!